hunch is that social services in general and community organizations in general often don't have a whole lot of formal intelligence gathering systems. It's a little bit more ad hoc. Um, and so we want to understand, well, what are the systems and processes in place when it comes to data? And what does that data tell us? Like what story, if you were to just look at the data, what story does that tell us about somebody's life and about the opportunities for experimentation in their life? Um, and then we can ask the question, well, what could it tell us? And if in the ideal world, what would we know in order to drive more experimental practice? That was sort of the hub moment it was like, the medical complications are driving a lot of things. Routines yeah. And, yeah. Um, and whether they're real or the fear of is also really interesting. Right. Yeah. Because I don't think that they necessarily know a lot about how it was going to change the routines yet. He's, from what I understand, he's been in the hospital for about two months and while there had a bunch of like balls and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I just don't think they know necessarily what what that means for how to support him. And yeah. So these outings, these that that have been happening every single week. That's a good day. That's like that's something that's really good that's happening. So like the question that I have is like they're still happening. But will it? But will if, it? if that increases, yeah. yeah. If there were more time, so more staff, would that? Uh, lead to a more ability to move into a behavior, uh, into right. experimental behavior, or just make routines mm -hmm. run more smoothly. Maybe there is a wish list about. I wish we had the luxury of experimentation. Yeah. But also, it's interesting because I think also there's so much innovation in poverty. Like yeah. you're forced to be innovative, and people figure things out in really creative ways because they had to. Like so, they didn't get to so-called thriving. But we really do want to be pushing the dial from surviving to more of that thriving yeah. end of the continuum. Well, and do we practice that only when things are seen as safe and exactly. steady? Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Which is probably never going to be true in a lot of the context that we work. I mean, right? I think that is the challenge in the disability space, mm -hmm. is that one might always make the argument that, yeah. that it's never a good time, right? That yeah. things are volatile or the person's health is so and so, and so then do they yeah. live their whole life like that? Yeah. But the other thing I've heard is that when you're going smoothly, you don't want to rock the boat by yeah. 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 yeah, because it's like, oh, well, things are actually working right now. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. He likes going bowling three times a week. Why yeah. would we change that? Which well, there's also wisdom too. Yeah. So. It's a little sunrise. It's just dawn. <laughs> <laughs> dawn. Okay. I like the metaphor. Very nice. Yeah. 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 Interviews and coming to team meetings, we're starting to observe that there is a lot of motivation and even um, seeming to be healthy, open power dynamics where people can share ideas and know that day to day new things need to happen and that that's good. We're questioning how the ideas that are safe to bring forward, if they're really protected or elaborated on um, or put into action. But at this point, we've almost finished our team practice interviews and now we are starting to dive into this week the leadership observations um, as well as doing much more uh, writing of the ethnographic stories and then moving into the sprint soon. So now we're ready to go into the user sprint where we take not just our interviews and thoughts around for staff members and leadership but hearing what is a user really um, having to say 